Okay, so for this new semester, semester two, we will use new ELIP platform. So let's get started. So for this seminar, I will give a really briefly about a new ELIP itself. Uh, first of all, you need to know introduction, just a brief introduction. Uh, the new ELIP platform and also the BL criteria. BL is blended learning. We will still uh, counting for the BL criteria. Uh, and then let's get started with the new ELIP. And then how you want to add resources using new ELIP tools. And also I will introduce some of the external tools that are really useful for your online teaching and learning. So adding activities as well using new ELIP tools. And there's also interesting external tools that you can use. Adding assessments using new ELIP tools as well. And some of several, I can say one or two external tools that you can use as an ass assessment. So I will show you also online teaching resources and guidelines, which already been provided at the ELIP itself. So, as you know, before this, our old ELIP, okay, we have the three stars. But currently, uh, if you notice our new ELIP platform, we didn't have these three stars anymore because uh, there's uh, some, because the e-learning unit needs to do some coding to do this. But maybe, okay, maybe they will using uh, like badges to indicate your blended learning uh, participation level. So it's still under progress because uh, as you know, our ELIP, our new ELIPS is almost three, three weeks, just three weeks. So there's a lot of work to do in order to get this indicator blended learning. But the blended learning, the count is still the same where you need to have seven resources at least seven resources, uh, three activities, and two assessments. Uh, before this, if one star, so actually it's the same principle, uh, the one, the new ELIP, but it's still under progress. So there are several badges and it's still, uh, it's the same concept. If you have, if you got one badges, it means that the minimum will be one participation for each activity and three submissions for each assessment. So it's really important to have your students to participate your activity, okay? Each activity where each activity, at least you have three activities and three submissions for each assessment. So at least there are three submissions for two assessment, the minimum. So if you got two stars, okay, or two badges, at least 30% of your total students have uh, have uh, participate in your activity and also submit your assessment. And three stars, it means that uh, at least 50% of your students already participate in your activities and also um, submit the assessments. So basically, Sorry. yes. Can I ask a question? Is, uh, you allowed to ask the question? Why yes, you... yes, please. Okay, yes. Uh, so uh, the uh, blended learning indicator is uh, automated or is manually counted by CAM? Before this, it's actually automated. But if you're using external tools such like Kahoot, because it's not embedded in our e-learning tools, ELIP tools itself, so you need to mention to CAM, okay, maybe Sometimes, sometimes because it's not automatic, because it's external tool, you can email to come, mention that actually you have extra, okay, you need to add another uh, uh, activities, which actually been counted, but you need to inform to come to be counted. So does, does it, does it make sense to so, you? Meaning, meaning to say, if we don't tell them, they won't go and check lah. Yes, yes. Because because that's why uh, when uh, if you if you realize I always email about uh, our report BL status to uh, to to the faculty as well and to the to your ELIP representative, uh, you need to double check again uh, the total number of your activities and assessment uh, be because two of them kind of uh, because we did a lot of activities but 
the activities that we use are external tools. So actually it didn't count automatically. So if you realize your BL report, which been emailed from me or from your ELIP uh, representative from your department, uh, you may realize there's a difference. So you could ask or email to come to double check again the total number of your activities and assessment by giving maybe like a screenshot, like a screenshot that you saying that uh, I'm using Kahoot as activity, but it, it didn't count it as an activity. So actually they can change that. So no problem with it as long as you have informed to them. So is that okay? So, so we can we can inform them before uh, we finish our semester or we need to wait until, because I noticed uh, in previous cases, um, even towards the end, I, I did email halfway through, but it was not entertained. And once the oh. result of DL came up, then only uh, they reply. Lah. Oh, I see. Maybe you could CC to me so I could uh, double check again with them. So is it okay? All right, thank you. All right. So yeah, the BL counter because uh, every semester we have the report, BL report. Uh, some of them, they have to, they have a lot of activities uh, like we mentioned earlier, okay, but they didn't realize it because it's not automatically counted, especially if you are using external tools like Kahoot or Padlet, mostly we are using those external tools. So please CC to me or email to me. Okay, I could double check again to the e-learning unit at COME to count, re recount again, recalculate again your uh, activities and assessments. So we move to the next slide. All right. So this is our new ELIP. Actually, we are still using the same, uh, I can say, uh, the ad address, web page address. Okay. ELIP at unimas.my. Okay. Maybe we should, I should click on it. All right. Let's see. This is. Uh, I hope you could see my elite page right now. Yes, I'm sharing the whole screen. Yeah, so elite.unimas.my here. Okay, first of all, uh, some of our, some of us are confused which one you need to log in. Okay, so maybe I should copy it. Okay, I will type it to to chat if you want to explore it. All right. So I have already shared the elip web page so you might want to check it okay first of all this is uh, our web page our new elip web page so there's a elip exam elip vault yes i would i will uh, explain one by one about this because there are several problems as well or, uh, especially elip vault okay so first of all you need to log in but not log in as elip guest you need to log in using unimas identity here Okay, so click on it and then just uh, key in your username and also your password as usual. So here we go. This is your new ELIP web page. You can see uh, there are, if you can see here, all right. If you click on this, it will be opened. Uh, I'm not, I don't know how to say it. it's a uh, wing, right wing, left wing. So if you don't want to see this, because if you open this, it will minimize this one. It becomes smaller. Just click on that again. And you also could click this one to make your dashboard look bigger. All right. So first of all, okay. So this is Mr. dashboard. Yes. Sorry to interrupt you. I'm Isham yeah. here. All right, yeah. Hafizah, sorry, I just thinking, terfikir saja. kenapa uh -huh. masa login tu, gas yang jadi utama, kita kena tekan butang, sedangkan <laughs> yang guna sistem ni kan orang Unimas, jadi kenapa dia perlu gas yang jadi, uh, macam mana, kan tadi dia ada, uh, user ni tu gas dulu kan, uh, why is it, uh? kenapa kita tak, kita yang jadi main, so kita terus fill in kita punya uh, ID sahaja, is there any reason, sorry lah kalau tak berkenaan, kita tanya oh. je. Sebab uh, letih nak kena klik setiap kali tu betul. Unimas Identity tu. Uh, actually Unimas Identity tu lebih kurang security. Uh, salah satu macam uh, defend macam bukan hanya satu defend, uh, bukan satu wall saja, tapi several walls before nak masuk ke ELIP. That's the main reason satu. Satu lagi, actually we have uh, uh, courses 
yang menggunakan elip luar pada Unimas tak silap saya dia pada fakulti I'm not so sure is it fakulti of economy I'm if I'm not mistaken yang menggunakan uh, dia pun membuat kursus uh, luar tapi menggunakan uh, elip so there's a guess there uh, macam tu dia bukan student Unimas tapi orang luar yang mengambil kursus di Unimas so tapi memandangkan tadi nampak login case tu lebih besar sikit berbanding dengan Unimas identity tu. Actually memang memang uh, come uh, e-learning unit nak besarkan lagi Unimas identity sebab confused kan kecil sangat tak nampak. Okay it didn't it's really small that everyone didn't notice it so it makes our uh, it makes us confused. Tapi sekarang ni uh, memandangkan e-lib e web page ni dia ada template dan template dia sendiri. Dan sekarang ni e-learning unit tengah bekerja keras untuk buat coding supaya Unimas identity tu nampak besar lagi. So that is the current issue right now. So that's why uh, kalau perasan masa awal-awal masuk e-lib web page tu dia sentiasa kalau uh, macam banner dia sentiasa cakap uh, log in using identity, Unimas identity uh, sebab sekarang ni masih lagi nak buat uh, ataupun nak ubah the template itself supaya Unimas identity tu nampak lebih besar lagi. Di sekarang ni masih diusahakan lagi still under progress hopefully uh, dalam masa dalam masa semester ni lah hopefully Unimas identity tu nampak besar macam sebelum ini lah okay, okay thank you uh, right. yeah because ada satu step kan kena tekan butang tu sedangkan kita boleh terus masuk kita punya ID tapi betul, I think betul. it's because of the security that you mentioned just now lah eh? mm, true okay, true thank you alright thank you alright welcome So that is okay. Memandangkan tentang security tadi, okay. Uh, I would like to explain on Vault. Vault ni actually archive our all elip. Sebab most of us would like to access our all elip. Sebab nak request, uh, it's not request. We would like to see our our learning materials dalam elip because we usually using the same materials. Uh, and then, tapi if you can see here, okay. Sekarang terdapat masalah there's a problem to access your old elip vault here okay i will click on this one okay so as you can see here okay because of the security tak dapat masuk old elip dengan menggunakan unimas identity setakat ini okay setengah lagi diusahakan but if you uh, really yes Dr. Visa. yeah uh, sorry yeah uh, i uh, okay. if you don't mind sorry for interrupting if you can please uh use fully English lah because we have other oh, sorry. structure so oh thank you oh yeah all right no problem thank you for reminding me sometimes yeah really excited to do to explain things and then I forget <laughs> faham, faham, faham. <laughs> yeah so all right so actually we have uh, problems in uh, in Unimas identity using Unimas identity to access your archive your old elip uh, which is under elip vault So currently the the best method for now okay just you need to request to access or to backup your last your old elip page by emailing to this elip at unimas.my okay and then you could inform to them or email to them that you want to backup your previous elip uh, maybe you should mention your what is your course code okay and then The e-learning unit will give you password. Okay, uh, I can say it's personal password for you to log in, and then you could back up your elip uh, or your old elip page. Yeah. So currently you couldn't uh, access your elip vault, so you need to request it first. Then you can access your elip, your old elip. It's not new elip, your old elip. All right. Because sometimes uh, we realize that we didn't download all of our assessments, students' assignments. So, you know, we need to do like a course files or all the documentation from previous semester. So, you need to uh, download it from previous elip, from the old elip. So, you need to request them. It should be no problem. But if you have uh, problems, If you if they didn't reply to you, you may CC to me as well. I could double check again to the e-learning unit uh, for you to access your old e-learning. All right. Hopefully, it's clear. 
All right, so we go for, okay, because it's elite vault, you go back again. Oh, so that is about vault. Okay, so again, uh, currently, if you are realized, uh, yeah. Excuse me, uh, may I ask you one question? Huh? This is very fundamental questions. Huh? Why should you um, come out with a new face of ellipse? What is the problem with the previous ellipse? All right. Okay, as, been, as you know, we have been online teaching and learning almost a year. Okay, almost yeah. a year. So you you realize that our ellipse sometimes it down and sometimes it's really slow. Because actually the mood the ellipse call is a Moodle. So the Moodle version is 3.2. So I can say it's really old. Okay. Currently this ellipse is version 3.9. This this one is upgrading uh yes, upgrading. Yes, upgrading upgrading version. Okay. Yeah, true. So, so uh, uh because uh, w when I see the first time last week, um yeah. uh you 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 separate the the the, the previous one, I mean the uh, I mean that my own elite previous one and so um do you have any uh a way how to bridge it or how to migrate it in the in a new ellipse rather than we have to lock in a vault v a u l i t vault oh, yeah. yes, uh, yes. What, what should you separate it why don't you there is no way how how to bridge it isn't it like that uh no actually you need to because all of the i can say all of your uh, learning materials there's a i can say it's a big size uh -huh. and if if you want to open it i can publicly so for security uh in terms of security it's not really secure if you open it like that uh -huh. so that's why um i can say e-learning unit i can say it's the middle person in charge just to secure your because okay uh, because your learning materials that test the final exams, all of the students' assignment, assessment assignments. Yes, so yes, you yes. need to protect it. So mm -hmm. that's why they need to check it one by one. Okay, they need to give the access one by one as well. So that why that's why if you really need okay uh, to access it immediate, immediately, so you need to request for them uh, to them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, okay. If you say this one is as a platform for the online learnings, uh, is it this one is just like Webex? You come out with the new versions, or we still can, uh, we still using Webex or Zoom, something like that. You, we cannot use this one straightforward, or we must do a recordings videos for teaching. Is this, this oh, one is similar? Okay. Oh. The new one, this one is similar or not? Because as far as I know, last week I opened, I tried to browsing it, okay, I uh, explore it. Uh, it's not much different with within the, the compared to previous one. True, uh, true. So, it's uh, and it's very much different compared to Webex. It's very much different also compared to Zoom, unless because Zoom is um, for the free is uh, 40 minutes only for if we pay for some kind of charge, maybe we can extend more than 40 minutes. So the, our lectures is normally handled for 20, uh, 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 80 minutes, uh, no, um, uh, two hours, two hours, uh, 120. Uh, so so uh, do you mean about this elip web page itself this elip uh, yes it yes uh, is there because i i saw this one is um uh, elip in uh, and and webex is some kind of a live on an uh, 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 that uh, platform because elip is i i could consider as a dead platform because uh, webex is we can use webex for um uh, video conference but ellipse um I, so far, I, I saw um, there is no uh, menu that uh, can make it alive. Oh, I see. Uh, so actually, you want to make it alive. Uh, uh -huh. We have several of activities that use students uh, uh, 
you mean uh, can, exactly we have to we have to uh, uploading the video or something like that through this platform yes true it's kind of platform between lecturer and student where both of students and lecturers will go to this platform to get the lecture materials as well the assessment as well because webex we we could give the lecture or discussion uh, but for assessment we need to go to the ellipse again because there's no yeah. quiz yeah something like that so that's why this ellipse actually just a platform uh, where all the information such as lecture material student could refer to it again uh, if you have the recording uh, or the lecture notes student could refer the ellipse again uh, without emailing to, to you because previously when we study uh, we don't yeah. have yeah we don't have this platform so sometimes we email the actually lecturer. actually for me they, they are they are send send the the quiz the quizzes assignment all everything through my email because only emails got uh, uh, quite numbers or byte compared to ellipse or compared to others uh, uh, approach i mean mm -hmm. others method so email is quite uh, high uh, quota compared to others so normally all my students send, uh, send uh, everything through email to me then i print yeah. it out and i'm marking i cannot marking online I, because it's very difficult for oh, me yeah on yeah, yeah. <laughs> same goes to me sometimes it's really uh, my i need to go a double degree right now mm -hmm. <laughs> yes uh, it's true that's why uh, there's a pro and cons when you do the online learning sometimes if you uh, if you just stay at your computer 24 so, hours it's not okay good. so this one is the extension yeah. extension i mean extension versions of the previous elif uh, okay uh, yes yes okay yeah. the upgrading the upgrading version <laughs> okay okay yes, yes this one so yeah, so the main purpose for the new ELIP is, is actually uh, to make sure no more lagging with ELIP because previously we have a problems. Uh, ELIP is too slow. ELIP couldn't be open because uh, there's, I can say the the version itself itself uh, previously is too old and it couldn't handle a lot of usage at the same time. So hopefully this new ELIP managed to solve all the problems. Uh, Okay, hopefully you just pray hard uh, okay so again uh, if you want to search for your course because some maybe you realize that some of your students are not listed uh, in your elip course in in your course in the elip so maybe you could ask your student okay if you want to search your course just click course search uh, you may type it here okay maybe maybe knc or kns okay just type it or you could go FE Faculty of Engineering, maybe under undergraduate. Actually, there's here are the list for all of our courses in Faculty of Engineering. You could see that. Okay, so the KNT here is already uh, updating the ELIP. You can see there's a synopsis a summary of the course itself. Yeah. All right. So actually, from here, you know, okay, who is actually uh, uh, lecture for this subject, MPU? So. It's it's just um, I can say it's it's clear uh, who is the lecturer uh, which involved in this uh, subject, right? So uh, we move to the next one, right? So anything if you want to go back to your dashboard, just click the dashboard here. This is the dashboard, okay? And if you want to see your course, okay, you can click here, okay? Maybe stop here you can click my course here so there's several courses okay for now i have three courses but if you could also see your courses it's not only on the left side also at the right hand side as well all right so there are two there are several uh, way you want to access your course okay so maybe i would like to access from here so for example my course is 40, 4283. Okay. As you can see here, I just added some pictures just to make just to make it not so boring. Yeah, because students would love to see colorful just to gain the uh, interest. Okay. Um, so first of all, what you need to do, okay, if you want to, okay, maybe I should click on if you want to make your uh i can say make your course livelier 
okay you could add setting okay so actually you could rename your course full name okay but make sure it's you need to put your course code to make it easier for the uh, bl calculation data and the report as well and then all right you could here you could describe the summary as been uh, as been you can uh, from previous course that has summary that has provided the summary actually he wrote it here maybe you could wrote uh, you could write it as this course will uh, will learn on how to or introduce you the renewable energy okay maybe something like that so it depends on you so the cost image here okay oh i didn't show you the cost image so what happened if you put the cost image here okay maybe i could give you an example okay for the faculty of engineering undergraduate so here as you can see there are this is the default setting or default photo but if you change okay something like this you can see two five two three unit operation so she put a dr josephine here yeah dr josephine already put a, a picture there which are really related to the unit ops okay so it's just uh, to gain interest the students to learn online learning okay so i already put the picture here okay so you can see it you can see for two at three energy resources and applications so that is how okay when you upload it into upload the photo to that setting so let's go back again process go to a tree all right but then okay so this is a photo you also could change your cost format previously you seen that my cost format is actually in here I use I choose it weekly, so it's 50 March to 21st March, 20 22nd March. So I set it to put it as weekly, but you could actually put it as a topic. So edit setting again. If you put it as topic here, okay. There's a lot of format. Just if you want to do one by one, but usually people will do for the topics format and weekly format because it's really you can say it's really clear uh, it's, it's not complicated to click here and there so if i click a topics format okay let's see save and return so it's something instead of week it will show you topic one two uh, and three maybe you would love to prefer to to have a topic instead of doing weekly okay so that's for the course format okay so if you want if you start uh, to do this editing you need to add on okay just turn the editing on and then you are free to edit your main course so i will show you okay so this is typical editing okay this is general Okay, I just upload, okay, just upload the banner, okay. If you don't want to do it, it's okay, just delete it. But uh, it is important for you to have a welcome note, at least the student aware what will what will they learn for this semester. So I've already done, so this course will be conducted in fully online. So to keep any updated, just see the announcements and please be aware with your assignment deadline or test. So I've already informed who are the lecturers actually in charge for this course. So you can type it. So it's 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 just a simple typing. Okay, there's no you can say there's no complicated setting here. Just type it here and there. Okay, so it's it's just a word. Okay, so um uh, for me it's better to have uh, at least like they are aware of their assessment assignment test final exam so they would not miss any assessment some some of our students tend to forget or oh, you didn't inform to me earlier that's why i didn't submit the assessment so there's a lot of reasons students didn't want to submit on time because we didn't inform them earlier 
So it's it's good to it's good for you if you inform them earlier how much assignment that you will give, how much of tests that uh, that have for this uh, course or uh, especially for assignment and uh, tests because final exam they will aware for for the final exam. Right. So that's the introduction uh, or the info that that is suggested to write in your general under general topic here okay to make sure students are aware what we are going to do for this course and then okay we start to do the the first at add, adding elip new elip tools here is adding resources so adding resources is really simple okay maybe under topic okay i should i should write it here all right just give an example here so for your resources here okay just click okay maybe i need to go back again just click add an activity or resource click on it so there are several of tab here activities resources recommended so resources is mostly file and folder usually we do this so if it's file uh, usually we do it in pdf document so or or power slide uh, power slides uh, of your lecture notes so maybe you could say this is your lecture note something okay just you need you need to put the name okay when you see this i can approximate symbol here so it is a must you need to write on it okay so maybe you if you want to uh, to put a description please read okay sometimes student they re students really need a really clear and straightforward instruction if you put their lecture notes do i need to open it sometimes they're asking me like that yes sometimes so please read please read it before our live session maybe something like that before our live session on okay so you could click this to display description on course page so the student would see it directly so they they don't don't need to click on the lecture note to see this uh, instruction so maybe i could okay if you want you can drag and drop the files or you could upload the files but i would love to drag drag it oh sorry guess i should all right so let me okay so this is the example this is my folder in this laptop in this computer if you want to drag and drop it maybe for example solar energy part one this is my lecture note for example you just click and drag it and drop it on the box so there you go you already uh, upload your files okay so save and return so that, that is how you want to upload your resources in this e-learning elip uh, web page so it's simple so please read it before live session on maybe on third week of lecture okay so they will click on this and they will have access to it okay so it's really straightforward and easy okay let's go oops let's go again to our i couldn't see it here okay maybe just click all right so that is how you want to add your resources. A uh, second, but again, uh, as we mentioned earlier, we have limited of size if you want to upload it directly like that. Especially if you want to upload your video. Okay, the video have a really, I can say, larger size, so it couldn't be uploaded directly to your elip. So my suggestion is, if you have a really long, like two hours or one hour, I guess almost 30 minutes of uh, video also have a larger have a really large files so maybe you could upload your video into your onedrive we have a lot of space in your uh, in our onedrive okay uh, how you want to access your onedrive is actually very simple from maybe i should go it from your email itself uh, uh, maybe I show you. Oops. 
couldn't see here. Okay. Maybe, okay, from your email. Okay. Starting from your email. Okay. Starting from email, just click the nine dots here. Okay. And choose OneDrive. Then that is how you want to access your OneDrive. Okay. If you want to add a folder here, just click new and add folder. Folder. Uh, I don't want to add folder. Maybe energy course, for example. Right, so create. Oh, it takes some time to create it. All right, so energy courses. So here we go. If you want to download it, uh, sorry, if you want to upload your video or your PDF or any of your learning materials there, just the same thing as well, drag files here, drag and drop. Okay, for example, drag and drop, I put it maybe uh, this one. Okay. Uh, Okay, PPT file, drag and drop. So it, you can see it's uploading item. Okay, so it's already already been uploaded into your OneDrive. Okay, for example, I would like right now because uh, I mentioned about the larger file here. So I would, I would give you some example for the video, video file. As you can see here, in my OneDrive, I've already several of videos my le previous lecture videos so some of them are really really big some of them are not okay for example 95 it's just a uh, megabyte here so how you want to share your video here into your ellip okay so just click the three buttons here okay and then copy link right copy link but you need to be aware because if you copy directly, the setting, this is the default setting where anyone with the link can edit. So we don't want, uh, I can say your students could edit your video. Okay, this is the important part. Uh, please don't click copy directly. You need to change the setting first. So click this one and then and tick the allow editing here. So if you it means that for those who have who could access the the video who has the link of your video they could not edit your video they just they just could view your video so after you untick the allow editing just click apply okay then okay then you can copy your link here all right so after you copy for example here I would like to add, so this is another resources by using the URL, okay, or the link. So the name here is lecture video, okay, lecture video. So this is, uh, you must you must fill in this box as well because there's a approximate symbol here. So paste it, okay. Okay, paste your uh, your link and then done. You are done. If you want to display it on the course page, it's okay. So save and return to course. So that's how you want to add your uh, lecture video. So if you click here, yeah, it will go directly to the video. Okay. Okay, so this is the video. Just click play and it will play your lecture video. We go back again. As you can see here, if you use URL here, uh, it it open the same page of your ellip, so it's not open the new window. Okay, so I would prefer to have uh, something. Okay, so this is another suggestion. You could use a label. Okay, label is something like text uh, but you could put a hyperlink into your text here okay maybe uh, for example here i would just give uh, example here i would put a just a picture okay just drag and drop it okay uh, see so if you want to edit your picture because right now it's really big double click on it okay then you need you can reduce the size 
maybe around 500. It's auto size, just click here and it would uh, it would help you to auto size it. So it's still big, it's still bigger like this one, it's really large. So I just put it 300, okay, and auto size it. So save image, okay, so it's really small now. So right now, okay, another way to make, uh, to open a new window, okay, just click on the, click on the photo and then click the this this symbol link okay so enter a url which or actually you have uh, uh you copy it before this so paste it okay and there's an option open a new, new window open it so create link so it should be okay okay but of course you need to to give an instruction to the students please click the image above uh, to watch the lecture video. Okay, maybe something like that. Okay, so you're done. Save and return. So if you click on this web uh, in this photo, okay, it's already instructed to click the image above to watch the lecture video. So click on it, and you can see. Okay, it's already open to a new window, and you could open it. Uh, you can watch the video. So uh, the the students they don't have to go back to the web page. I mean, just click to here. They just could close it and they are able to see the ellipse uh, web page again. So that is for the I can say for the resources, right? So again, adding activities. So you have done uh, adding your resources, your lecture notes, your lecture videos. So it is really important to have activities because first of all, you need to take attendance uh, of your students. Okay, if you do the live session, it should be okay. If Webex, you could share your QR code and then they could scan it. But if you do, if you're not doing live session, uh, asynchronous, uh, you just uh, upload your lecture video. So it is really important to have activities to have a report or to have a list or evidence which students have, uh, I can say, as their attendance. So for, for here, for ELIP, usually, okay, the common tools, ELIP tools that has been used as uh, activity is, okay, under activities here, usually we do it as a chat here, yeah? Chat or forum, right? So chat maybe, but again, uh, you need to make sure it's really clear instruction, just activity, oops. Activity one. This maybe you need to ask, activity is to make sure the students have a response or simple response should be, uh, we don't need to have a complicated response because it's just an activity, it's not an assessment. So maybe we should uh, add, uh, what is your opinion? on nuclear energy okay so actually okay so it's really simple chat chat and forum has the same uh, almost similar setting save and return here so if they click the activity one okay click here to enter the chat now so it's really simple and direct uh, straightforward instruction so that's for activity if you are using for ellipse tools okay so right now, uh, I would like to introduce you the, I can say, an interesting of activities. So here, here us is the example here. Uh, it is, it used word wall, okay. So activity two, maze chase. Uh, please click start to play the game. It's kind of game. So it makes a student because we are struggling to have student, to have 100% students attendance. So we would love to have uh, interesting uh, tools, uh, mostly external tools to just attract the students, at least they respond. So we could record them as attend the course. Yeah, attend your class. So for example here, okay, I'm not so sure if you're hearing the same sound as me. So this is a maze chest here. 
So an example here, in order to have a balanced equation, what is the value of A? So if you remember, uh, if you remember this is similar with the uh, Pac-Man, okay? So you can control it using the arrow button or your mouse here. So you need to select which is the correct answer. So maybe, oh, if you go to the wrong answer, they will, they will give you the, the wrong answer there. So there's life here as well. All right. So it's really good because you could record your attendance, although you couldn't see the attendance here. I will show you on how you could uh, obtain the report from this activity. Okay. All right. From here, it's word wall. Maybe I should click it. Okay. Just Google it. W O R D W O L L. Yeah. So it's uh, free. You can sign it and it's free. Uh, no problem with that. So with this, okay, if you want to create uh, activities, okay, create activity here. Okay, I will show you one by one. Create activity and then there's a lot of, uh, I can say, a lot of types of activities. But interesting for me, uh, I've already tried several and I would love to have a maze chest because it's just remind me how I love uh, the Pac-Man before this. So yeah, so I just click mess chest, okay. So activity here, title, I would say uh, maybe graphic light, for example, yeah. It's really, it's really simple. So so for for the question is, okay, it's, it's good because right now you, they have a setting superscript, subscript, so, for me, as a chemical engineering lecturer, I would really love to use this just to write my equation, my reaction equation. So uh, it's really simple. What are the colors of traffic light? Oops. Traffic. Oh, typo. Traffic light. Okay. So actually you could choose uh, several of answers or you could choose only one correct answers. So right now I put it blue, of course it's wrong, okay, red, it should be correct. If it's correct answer, just click on it, okay? Uh, and then maybe uh, I could say it purple. Okay, and then green. Green is supposed to be correct answer and then yellow, correct answer. And the wrong one should be black. Oh, I don't want to be black, white. Okay. Uh, Student so must select one correct answer here. Mm. It's okay. Uh, one of them should be okay, but if you want to, it's three of them. So either one, it should be correct. Okay. Uh, if you want to set one correct answer, if you want to select all correct answer, just choose all correct answer. Okay, so right now we have three correct answers. So if they want to pass the maze chest, they need to uh, select the all of these three correct answers. Okay, if you're done with it, just click done. All right. So, okay, this is where you get started. Okay, uh, it's okay. I will share this one. Okay. I could share this one by, but first of all, I want to show you on how to, oops, sorry. Okay, since I want to embed it, okay, I want to embed it in our ELIP as been, uh, as you see in my uh, ELIP, okay, whether you want to iframe it, thumbnail it, a small icon, okay, and then you copy it. But if you want to uh, to record your student attendance, okay, to generate code that will collect results, to collect results, yeah, will collect results, you need to set assignment, then click this, okay? So you need to set the assignment first, okay? So first of all, of course, you need the name of the student. So students must enter a name before they start, okay? Before they start to play this maze chess, okay? They need to enter the name. So they, uh, if you want to use this one, you need to instruct them to use their full name, okay? 
So enter name here, okay. Uh, shows answer if you want to show answer. If you don't want, it's okay. Or, uh, sorry, it's if you hear the sounds, it's actually from the maze chest itself. Okay, the leaderboard you could show who's the I can say who's the fastest that get the correct answer, and start again. Start again. The that it means that student could replay it several times. So I would I wouldn't like to have that play several times if if they want. It's okay to play several times, but if you don't want, just play, uh, just just once. Yeah. So then after you have done with your setting, just click start. Okay, so all done here. Okay, maybe I could copy this. Okay, and I would share with you in the chat box. Where is the chat box? Yeah. Okay, maybe you could try try to play it. Yeah, try to play it if you. Oops. All right. It's just okay. So already set assignment here. Is that done? Oh no. Shows answer leaderboard. Okay. Okay, then I would like to okay. And entry is already mentioned here. And entry has been added to my results. So if your students already play uh, your mess chest, it would actually uh, give the result or give a list of the students or the list of participants that join your maze. Yeah. So let's see on your results here. Okay. It's already mentioned my results here. Okay. Previously, I have uh, tried to do the results. So from this one, this documented equation, the first, uh, the previous one. Okay. Okay. This is just an example. Yeah. So it, it will actually give the names of the students, okay, at what time, how, how long they could get the right answer. So from here, you could do as an attendance, okay. Uh, it's just an alternative way if you want to do uh, from, uh, because Elip, we just do chat tools or forum tools. So this is another way, exciting way to do an activity. So how you want to embed this activity, to your uh, elip, okay. So oh, sorry. So for this yes? activity, tadi there's only five students uh, participated. Yeah. yeah. So you, True. You, you can actually get if you were to make it as the uh, whole class is also possible. There's no limit. Yes. Yes, the whole class you could actually the result by student is from uh, is for the whole class. It's not the leaderboard. Leaderboard is actually here. Okay, leaderboard. It means that you have set it maybe top ten or top 30 uh, or top five only, but for the result by student is actually uh, list all of the students that participates uh, in your activity. So as you can see there two person, this is some example because I just have a five people uh, volunteer to do this activity. So that's why it's just show you five. Okay, maybe I give you some example in doing, where's my elite page? Yeah, so maybe I start it again. Okay, uh, what is the leaderboard means and what is the list of participants? So leaderboards, I should, all right. Okay, I just go the straight forward here. Okay. So when it's correct, it will go to the leaderboard. Okay, uh, here we go. Just take a second. So leaderboard, uh, that is how you get the name for the students. Uh, me, just click enter. So, so because this is not the updated one, the previous version is the updated one. So it shows you the leaderboard. Right now, oops, right now I just said just top 10 so it will give you top 10 ranking top 10 who get the uh, the fast the the far uh, i can say uh, the fastest answer correct answer yeah so this is your results and then if you want to embed your activities okay again activities here okay this is traffic light so maybe i should okay embed it 
Okay, embed. Okay, click the three three dots here. Okay, and then click embed. Okay, again. Uh, here is just the team is just space, so you didn't have any choice. So I frame this in example type. So copy the HTML here, and then go to your clip. Okay, for example, I just put it here. All right. I edit here, or I just choose uh, active resources. I, I love to use label, okay? Uh, and I write it as this uh, click start to play the game. It will be considered as your activity, something like that. Uh, depends on you, uh, on how you want to in give instruction to the student. Okay. And then, how you want to embed it. First, there's a symbol like embed here, HTML. Click on it. Okay. Just click at the end of your, I can say the text here, and then paste. Okay. Right click and paste it. Okay. After you're done, you can click it again this HTML button and you could see there you go the traffic light messages so save and return to course so that's how you want to embed the messages uh, or using the wall uh, the word wall in this clip so hopefully it's really clear so then you can start yeah so it's already started oh I should stop it Okay, so how should I stop it? All right. Okay, that is another activity, interesting activity. So, uh, this is a new one that I found. Word, word wall. Okay, word wall. Where is it? Okay. W O R D W A L L. Okay. So we meet. Uh, uh, I guess uh, the Padlet is usually. I can say. Uh, we've done, some of us really love to do Padlet. So, uh, Padlet is how to embed the Padlet as well. Okay, Padlet uh, is easier to make as well. Make a Padlet. Oops, sorry, it's already rich because I signed it a free version. So, it's just, uh, I can say, it's just several, some numbers. Right now, I have six. Okay, but if you want to use your Padlet, it just, Delete one of your padlet and then create a new one. So here I just use a, I can say the, my old padlet. So if you make a padlet, okay, and how you want to share your padlet or how you want to embed your padlet in your ellipse, it it is the same uh, setting as well as our word wall. Okay, just click the three buttons here. Okay, more. Okay, and then share or embed okay click share or embed and then okay it's already public okay double check again if it's not public you could put it public and then it's not copy link to clipboard i love to embed it okay and click this one okay a fully functional padlet okay there are several several of types of embed but it really the best one for me is this one fully embed so copy it Okay, and we go to the to our Elip web page. So here, I would love to have uh, activities or yeah, as a label again, resources, or maybe a page here. It's label. It's okay. Right at. Okay. Click on the padlet below to give your opinions. This, this is for examples, yeah? Okay, and then you can say that this is an activity and it will count it as your attendance, maybe something like that. So it's the same thing as well. Click HTML, okay? And then click at the end of the text and paste it. Paste it and then click it again and you can see your uh, padlet, yeah? Because it is easier because some of the embed code you need to click on it first then you could ex uh, you could see 
the response from students. But right now, you it's easier because right now you could see it from your ellipse okay, and scroll it down. Okay, you can see who who are the persons which students already responds or which students already answer or uh, answer your questions. Okay, because right now I've given questions. Uh, not a question, I already give them questions. But can you deal with your food scraps? Can you convert it into energy? So they give us some of examples. So I can see, okay, I already have 10 of group. Let me see one, two, three, four. Oh, all of them already have give the response. So it's quicker way on how you want to uh, observe or monitor your students' activities. So this is a Padlet. So again, your assignment here, uh, it's already 337. Okay, so this external. So actually, I, I forgot to do this one. Uh, actually, if you see the activities here, there's a lot of game, uh, new tools in Elip like game crossword, crypt text, hangman as well, the hidden picture millionaire as well. How to, how. Uh, who, who wants to become a billionaire, uh, that's it. Uh, snacks and letters as well. So for example, if you want to do game, a crossword, okay, for example here, okay, uh, maybe I put it as crossword activity. How to do this one? It's not a straightforward, uh, I can say straightforward process, all right? Because first of all, the source of equation, uh, the source of questions, you need to choose it, whether from the glossary, from your questions, question is question bank, or your quiz. Okay, currently, okay, so I need to go back again to show you my question bank here. Okay, maybe I could put it like here. I didn't show it, just should leave it. Okay, my question banks, okay. When you go to your course here, your main page of your course, click on the right button here, the wing, right wing here, and you could see the question banks here. Okay, I've already put several of questions. Okay, so the question is similar when you do the quiz using Elip. It create new question and then choose. But for all or most of the activities, the game, the game activities. They would love, uh, I can say the setting is using the uh, this short answer question only. If it's multiple for, for I can say for the crossword, it didn't, I can say it didn't, it cannot read because crossword is not a multiple you could choose, but you need to do to type the text for the crossword. So uh, for example, here, I create new questions, uh, short answer. Okay, this is a simple short answer, add it. Okay, so question names, I would love to have a traffic light again. I'm so sure why I love traffic light. So question text, okay, yellow, no. Red means, okay, so if you want, to have a, how to set your correct answer. So your first answer here, okay, only one answer here. Red means stop, S-T-O-P, okay? So if it's correct, you should put it 100%. So that's it, all right? So it's really simple, so save changes. If you already have all of your questions in the question banks, then you could do your crossword uh, game, okay? We go back to the previous, it's not previous, uh, your elite course, okay, just add it, all right, so gram, game crossword, okay, so here, uh, you could write a description here, okay, but I will show you on how to do uh, the crossword puzzle uh, using these elite tools, so source of questions, I would love to have, a, we do have question banks, so put the questions there, so again, select question category is actually under default for your course. You can see it's seven here, okay? We have seven questions. So maximum number of attempts, would you like, 
would you love to have the students to have multiple attempts or you didn't care about how many attempts just leave it blank but if you just uh, one have to them just one attempt just to make sure is there really understand is there really understand with our uh, lecture this one and then that's it save and return so let's see how our crossword looks like so click on the crossword okay uh, highest grade here attempt game now okay uh, it's saying that there's a words with spaces but in the game spaces are not allowed so it means that okay there's a setting there uh, because the answer is hydro space energy so it didn't include in the this crossword because the space is not allowed so there's some of limitation using this crossword puzzle so let's see attempt game now so it looks like this all right so it looks like this, like if direction requires heat, direction can be called as, or you could click on this five across here. Direction requires heat, I, I put it as endothermic. Uh, is. Okay, if they already type it and click okay, uh, something like that. So click one by one here and then just type the answer. So that's how you want to do the crossword puzzle. Okay, this is activity. So if you are able, uh, I can say you could see the results who actually managed to get uh, the highest. I can see the list of students as well also been reported. There's also a report for students who actually uh, joined this activity. So if you want to do uh, as, acti as an activity for an attendance record, you should be able to do that as well. Yeah. So, okay, that's what you could do that uh, as a as a activity or, so, or as an assessment. But for assignment, usually we just put the assignment button here, just for them to upload the assignment in PDF form or usually PDF form or words form. Sorry, activities here, activities means uh, that the student need to, uh, I can say, uh, need to have a response from the students. So this is the assignments. So assignment name, maybe you can say assignment one. Okay. Please upload your assignment here. Done. So how does it look like? Okay, this is how you want to set. When when you uh, can say you can set it when they could submit it. Okay, the range of time. All right. So right now you make it available at fifteen March until twenty second at uh, twenty second of March, uh, midnight. Okay. So submission type. If you some of us, okay, some of us would like to have a file submission. Maybe they need to submit Microsoft Word or PDF, but some of us would like them to submit their link because sometimes we would like to access the oral presentation. Okay, Oral presentation, it could not be submitted in a video format uh, because it's really large sometimes. Uh, and it's not a, I can say, text version that we could see as a file submission here. So we don't want First of all, because the video is really bigger, always, okay, usually it's bigger size, we would recommend do the online text. So you could mention the students, please share your link of your oral presentation video at here. So it means that although the students want to upload their video in your ELIP, they couldn't upload the video because the file submission is not is unthick, okay? It just allow them to to give online text. Just give the online text only. So that is how you want to control how much or the size of your uh, assessment which been uploaded by by your students in your elip. Okay. So maybe we could say save and return to course uh, assignment here. Okay. Oh, because right now we are currently viewing as a lecture. So we didn't get to see how they click 
on the submit button, how they enter the submission uh, button, submission text. Okay, as you can see here, uh, participants here means that the total number of your enrolled students in your ELIP course, yeah? Okay. So make sure that uh, if you want to access, this is another information. If you want to access which students is actually or never access in your course page. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes some of our students uh, missing in action, MIA, and we didn't know whether she or he already access to our course or uh, or she just missing in in action just yeah. so uh, how you want to know whether she already been informed or already uh, noticed the assessment in your elip okay at least access in your elip just okay okay again to your elip course okay and then you could go to the users here click users and then click enroll users all right as you can see, there's a list of all of the, the teacher as well and the students. And you could see here, last access to course. Okay, you can see, okay, right now I know, oh, my student here never access my ELIP. So, okay, I need to go check whether he's okay or not. Okay, whether he's aware of my assessment, uh, my any deadlines of my uh, assignments. Okay, so this is one way. Uh, just to track down your students, whether they have access, access in your uh, elite course. Yeah. So that is all for adding the resources, activities and assignments. Okay. It's already uh, almost 3.50. Uh, all right. So if you want to see the guidelines here, okay, in dashboard as itself, okay, click the dashboard itself. Uh, below there, there are uh, staff quick guide. Okay, we have staff quick guide. Uh, we also have uh, several of, okay, this one is another one. Uh, a tips on how to embed a file bigger than 50 megabyte on ELIP. So, so there are several costs, uh, there are several guidelines that you could access. And there's a cost overview, all of your courses here. So, Yes, so this is come. So there's a guidelines in the ELIP as well. So there's a lot of guidelines here. Yeah, you could explore it one by one. So I will it should be it should be question and question session here. So do you have any question regarding on our new ellipse tools? If you don't have any questions, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I should copy it first. Okay. Uh, in order to, imp yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, again, sorry, I didn't hear. Uh, the questions are in the chat section. Oh. Sorry, thank you so much. You didn't realize it because when you share, you couldn't see the chat box here. Okay, let me see one by one. Yeah. Okay, show to import from Elite Vault to this semester. For oh, this one, I couldn't show you because I, me myself, couldn't uh, access the Elite Vault, but if I could access if they have managed to uh, to solve the problem on the Unimas identity to access the e Elite Vault, I would share you on how to do the uh, to I can say backup backup your cost your old Elite cost and then do it using your new Elite. Okay, currently I couldn't show you how to do that. What else? I just have one questions. Okay. All right. So I yeah. did I did uh, submit to you two questions to Hafizah Abdul Halim. I cannot submit oh. to everyone, so oh. I don't know why. Okay, because right now I open my laptop as well as well as my computer. Uh, so I guess it's from my laptop, the other side here. Uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Let me 
check it one by one, yeah. Can we indicate can we indicate activities in ellipse so that come can count it? Uh, indicate activities in ellipse. Activities and ellipse already been stated here. Okay. Which been counted as activities. Okay. Let me go to my course here. Okay. If you add, let me put it. If you add activity, it's already give you the, I can say, group of activities, resources, uh, something like that. Yeah. So it's actually, uh, you Hamza, know, uh, Dr. Yeah. Hamza, uh, Marina yeah. here. Uh, uh -huh. Just to uh, clarify a bit on the question. Actually, uh -huh. this is actually uh, related to the questions asked by Dr. Daniel before this. Oh, okay. uh, he was asking if um, if Calm can detect uh, those uh, external okay. activities. activities. Uh, yeah at in elite so last time uh, when i consult with come they said that they can uh, actually we can uh, indicate um, the activities by labeling the activity as activity True. so yeah. uh, if that is visible and you write it down on uh, on your activity then come will count it for you automatically yes True. That's why it's really important if it's uh, activity or is it assessment, you need to put it activity one and then uh, anything topics. Uh, but How sometimes... How do you label it as activity? As activity? Okay. Currently, uh, some... Okay. For now, you didn't want to use any activity tools in Elip. Okay. Because for, for some reason, you love to do... Okay. Like Padlet right now. Okay. Uh, Okay, for example, I didn't, I didn't able to click here. Okay, for this Padlet, okay, you want to do a Padlet as an activity. So you would love to have, okay, I would like to embed this one. Okay, and then this is one of your activity, copy, and you can go to, okay, for example, I should go down here. Okay, uh, something like this one. Okay, this one you use uh, this tools, all right, which is it's not activity, it's resource. Although we use resource, file also, usually we use label or a page. So for example, here, you use page Usually, here. usually I use label. Label, okay, it's okay. Or something similar like this one, right? This is label. Okay, it's okay. We use this is label. It's okay. I add another one again. Uh, label. I need to. I also love to use label. So click label. And then just your instruction there. Just activity. Activity one. Uh, and then yeah, please click play. It's not maze chess. Maze chess. Okay. All right. Maybe you need to have a, I can say, a clear instruction saying that this is actually as activity because sometimes you put it, okay. Uh, for example, sometimes you just put it without any instructions. It will confuse whether is it as an activity or as a resource. So, Sometimes they put it as a resource uh, because the label is actually, as you could see it, a label is actually under resource. Yeah, it's not under activity. But then if you put the like, instruction activity one, mess chess, okay, maybe you could say, okay, students, uh, is, uh, it's a must for the students to do this uh, activity for attendance. So actually this is an evidence for you that says this is an activity. It's not a, as a resource or it's not an assessment. Okay. Oh, meaning to say you, you put a, a, a word there saying mm. that it's activity, then the, the come people, they will detect that. Lah. Is it? Yeah. Yes, true. But again, okay, it's not automatically, automatically they could detect because we have a lot of courses and then for them to check one by one, some 
we are human, so we are sometimes we have a we tend to do a human error. So double check again uh, with the blended learning report. If you if you count that your activities is actually less than what uh, what have BL report from Com has stated, you need to email them by just print a screenshot with this one. Okay, actually I have done the activity, but you didn't count it as activity. Can you uh, update it to me? Update my total number of activities. Uh, so at least they they could okay calculate it by using your evidence here. So hopefully it's hopefully it's clear. Okay, just you need to have a clear instruction whether it, is it activity or uh, an assessments because right now label is indicated as resource uh, tools for elite. Okay, let me check it here. Is it possible for us to see how the students view their elite platform? Uh, I couldn't. I couldn't see how the students view point of view because right now we are we are uh, viewing as a lecturer but if you want to know how the students view the result just turn editing off okay so this is how the students see it okay but not so sure about the setting this one the admin setting this one i'm not so sure how the students view it but for the course itself just turn editing off and then you can see it okay right now okay i'm i'm really freely just adding on but currently students are in this course i'm i'm okay with it because right now it's hidden from students okay you could actually set your topic hidden okay so how to oops sorry because sometimes we really sometimes if you want to upload your test earlier so it's really good to have these tools hidden from students so we could actually able to open this test or this topic once the test is started so how you want to hidden it just edit it and this one whether you want to show a topic or you want to hide the topic that's it so it's already stated here yeah, hidden from students okay topic one is actually student could see it okay hidden so there's an indicator there whether the students able to see it or not okay because if you turn editing uh, off uh, you still able to view this because you are lecturer but for the students only until topic one okay so that's for the students view sorry uh, uh to interrupt yeah when you put the figure just now how do you make it uh full like the banner just now oh this one is it ah, this one yeah, yeah. yeah uh actually i'm using this template from canva okay i put it as a banner uh, template uh so when i let me show you turn editing on for example i'm adding this one at the topic okay uh, from canva is an, another external tools i would love to show you but uh, i take a lot of time uh, so here okay i have download my my template canva uh, for example oh, it didn't appear here so let me show just Yeah, for example, it's too many folders here. Okay, for example, banner here. Okay, where's my ellip again? All right, so I just, when you download your banner from, I'm, I'm using Canva, so just click and drag it and release it. So it's already full like that, something like that. Yeah, I, I actually didn't set, up, set it up, it's automatically, uh, been precise something like this so it's already full but if you want to uh, I can say edit it edit the size you may edit it like by double click on this and just play around with the size maybe it's too big for you I just want to have a 
a thousand and then just click here it will auto size so it will not be compressed or elongated elongated elong or elongation so it's not so it will be auto size like that so save image so it will be become like this one so you could resize it or you could do it full uh you can say full 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 page in your course Okay, is there any question? Uh, okay, adakah pelajar yang daftar kepada kursus tersebut saya dapat view this ellipse sama seperti ellipse exam? Uh, actually, okay. Actually, students, okay, for now, okay. For me, since uh, students is able to view your courses, actually. Yeah, okay, let me, oops, sorry. Let me show you the faculty engineering, yeah. Right, uh, something like I would like to view. Oh, sorry, yeah. Uh, I would like to view KNP three zero five three. So right now, this is how the students view as well. Okay, self enrollment. It mentioned that no enrollment key required. So if this is where you already informed that it is. If people want to click enroll me, sorry, yeah, I just click enroll. This is for example, I've already access to it. That's it. Yeah. So it's if you put the enrollment key, uh, no, the key, the key, where is, where is it again? Let me, oops. Uh, I should, let me show you another example because it's already, okay, for this one, okay. If you put your in enrollment key, okay, it should. Uh, so the students need to ask for the enrollment key for you or from you. So if they get the enrollment key, then they could access. Uh, they could access the uh, your subject. Yeah. So I'm not so sure where where do we get. Uh, I will double check with with the e-learning unit from Cam how the how we want to do the enrollment key. If if we want. Okay, it's possible, but I'm not so sure the process, how the process to get the enrollment key. Uh, okay, at each section of map hidden from students. Ah, okay, it's already been been answered. I have, okay, yeah. Okay, so I guess that's all for now. Please help me to to give a feedback okay uh, for this training i will give as well as in the chat okay but if you could qr scan the qr code here it should be okay as well okay with more five minutes okay i will open this page five minutes and then i will open the qr code so that's that's all for now thank you so much for joining this seminar and all the best for this new semester with new elite platform if you have uh, any questions uh, or you facing problems with this new elite tools feel free to email me or to contact me uh, I'm, I'm gladly to help you right thank you so much thank you thank you doctor Terima kasih.